The H500i from NZXT carries a small footprint without compromising on features, like flexible hardware configurations, a removable radiator bracket for easy installation, and stellar cable management for a tidier system. Game in style with a tempered glass side panel, integrated RGB lighting, and a built-in cam-powered smart device to manage your lighting and fans. Do more with less in the H500i. Click the link below to learn more. All right, y'all, so this is the Enthu Elite build that I put together a while back and it hasn't been able to post for the last few months. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure what's going on with it. It's a super high-end system. It's probably around $12,000 MSRP with a Core i9-7980XE that's been delitted and a pair of GTX 1080 Ti's in SLI, not to mention the plus four terabytes of NVMe storage. So this thing's an absolute beast and it's kind of just been sitting here. It's a very, very heavy and expensive brick right now. So um, I'm gonna try to get to the bottom of it today. There is an error code on the motherboard that's saying A0, which I looked it up on the ROG forum. A0 means all is well. There's, there's tons of people reporting A0 on their boards and they're using their computers perfectly fine. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on. There's a couple basic troubleshooting methods we can go through, clearing the CMOS, maybe doing a BIOS flashback, and a couple other things um, before we decide to actually drain the entire loop and start extracting hardware for further troubleshooting, which is gonna be so much fun. But hopefully we can figure out the problem before it comes to that. I honestly have no idea how this video is gonna end. I'm hoping that it ends with us being able to boot into Windows and figure out what's going on, uh, but we could very well just be uh, as much of the dark as we are now. So, should be an adventure. Let's go ahead and start off with clearing that CMOS, which we should probably turn the computer off first. Fortunately, the Rampage 6 Extreme that's in here has a clear CMOS button on the back, so we don't even have to get our hands dirty on the inside. Just gotta hold it down. Think that ought to do it. And let's boot her up. Power on. So I do have a video cable plugged into the monitor up there, one of the monitors up there. Um, I'm not expecting this to work because as you guys might have expected, I've already tried clearing the CMOS. I'm really just doing it for this video so you guys can see the whole process. Uh, but yeah, like I said, this hasn't booted in months. So obviously clearing the CMOS was one of the first things that I tried, but just to see if it'll actually magically start working on camera, it doesn't seem to be. Let's see what, if the, the error code, oh, it's, it's double booting. It's double booting. Give it a second. Give me a sign. Please. All right, code A0, post error. Clear CMOS, fail. So the next troubleshooting step I wanna take is to update the BIOS via BIOS flashback. Now this is something that I actually haven't tried yet and was suggested to me on Twitter by Coalition Gaming and I believe Jay's Two Cents also backed that up saying that it, it, it's worked for him in the past as well. So I've got the BIOS right on here, the latest BIOS. I'm gonna stick it into the rear port, woohoo and uh, make, made sure that it's in the right port and stuff. And then I'm just gonna hold down the BIOS flashback button until it starts blinkity blinking. And then it's just gonna keep blinking until it's fully updated. Lights turned off, BIOS is finished updating. Boot number... I'm sorry, this, this, this must have come from my soon to be ex-wife. And boot. Nothing so far. Oh, there it goes, double booting again. Okay, nothing's coming up on the screen, so I'm gonna double check the error code. A2, A2, it went from A0, so the postcode changed. It was A0, meaning all's well, and now it's A2. What is A2? A2 seems to be a storage error, meaning that the system might not be able to identify the OS disk properly. There's only three disks or drives in the system right now. There's the 960 Evo that has the operating system on it, and then there's two two terabyte 960 Pros in the DIM.2 external PCB uh, mounted straight to the motherboard. So I'm gonna remove that card. I'm just gonna remove both of those SSDs, leaving only our OS disk and see if that changes anything. All right, I've got the DIM.2 right here. Two of the SSDs, boot it up. <sighs> Let's see what happens. Still says A2. And unfortunately there's no way for me to access that SSD without draining and disassembling the entire loop because it's mounted to the motherboard underneath the motherboard's sort of shield or whatever. It's a giant plate that's being covered up by the graphics cards and obviously you'd need to tear down the loop in order to remove those. So, 
All right, well, I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but it looks like I'm gonna have to drain the loop after all if I wanna take a closer look at the drive and uh, perhaps troubleshoot the CPU. But, um, but that's okay. I'm kinda glad to see the, the Primo Chill View Fluid go after seeing what it's done to other builders clogging up and gunking up their loops and stuff. So I'm fine with it, you know, get rid of that poop in my loop. Uh, whatever. So I think right now I have to actually lift this thing, move it over to the kitchen area to begin the draining process, which means I'll need to call upon the help of someone with rippling muscles and superhuman strength to help me lift it. Come on, honey. You got it. Down easy. All right. Good job. High five. All right, you can leave now. I was just kidding. So here's the drain system. Right off the bat, you can see all this crud left over from the Primo Chill view. It's just nasty. It's even worse if you look at the water blocks. Like, here's a GPU block, and it's just solidified. Like, liquid is not supposed to do that. So, um, you know, maybe the, the, the trick to water cooling is, is, is water, which is why I'm gonna fill it up with distilled water next. I'm, I'm done, I'm done using that fancy fluid that just leaves a bunch of garbage in your loop. Uh, so anyway, anyway, we're gonna do a little test boot. I just have a little temporary air cooler on here and a 1070 Ti just so we can get a video signal. As you guys remember, the 7980XE does not have integrated graphics, which is why we need a discrete card. So let me quickly plug in the power, uh, excuse me, I just had breakfast, plug in the power supply and boot. Okay, I remembered, I remembered at the last minute to unplug the pumps, otherwise they would have dry run and uh, potentially broke. So I'm really glad I, I, I bared that in mind. Uh, all right, so things are spinning up, that's good. Still nothing on screen. Oh, double boot, damn double boot. If this works, if it just like boots instantly into Windows, I'm just gonna leave the system like this. I'm not gonna touch the thing. Oh my God. Oh my God. What? what? <gasps> Maybe it was the video card. I'm wondering if this wasn't properly mounted or if it wasn't fully seated in its PCI Express slot. I mean, it looked like it was totally fine, but you never know. I think I'm gonna do something right now that I would not recommend anyone doing. Uh, I'm actually going to fill the block with water and I'm just gonna like cap it off so that it's not actually attached to a loop, but just just enough water to to handle whatever idle temperatures Just to see if we can get it booted with just this card installed and making sure that it's firmly mounted in place So it should be okay, but again not recommended. All right, let's fill her up So here comes our really sketchy test boot with the water-cooled graphics card that is not really being water-cooled. Um, everyone, cross your fingers. Oh, oh, it's working. It's working. Okay, okay, all right. It's, it's not the graphics card, but it kind of maybe is the graphics card. Oh my God, we're booting into Windows. Wow. All right, so I'm quickly gonna shut this off because I don't want the graphics card to overheat or anything. Okay, so then what? what's the deal? Why, if I reassemble the loop, technically everything should be fine, right? So the only thing that really makes sense in my mind is that the graphics card has just not been seated properly this whole time for like months. And this could have all been avoided, all this troubleshooting, had I just moved the graphics card in a millimeter or two. I'm not sure if that's the situation. I, I, I'll have really no way of ever knowing, but that's the only thing that I can really think of right now as to why we've been getting a black screen for the last four months or whatever. At any rate, I'm really not too disappointed that I drained the loop because like I said, I'm really glad to get that Primo Chill view fluid out of my system. I'm gonna be refilling the loop with good old fashioned distilled water this time around 
Maybe that's a sign I'm getting old, who knows. Um, and I also have to take apart some of the other elements like the radiators and uh, reservoirs to actually clean them out so that we get all that gunk out before we refill. Hopefully the second time around we'll have better luck booting into Windows after all said and done. So on that note, let's get to it. Would you look at that? We're up and running. But why is the water so cloudy, you ask? It looks like shit. Yes, yes it does. Uh, that's because, if you could probably tell from the montage, I only actually cleaned the water blocks and the tubes. I didn't bother removing the radiators, uh, or I guess the pumps. I, I, did, I did clean the reservoir tubes, however. Uh, just because it would have taken me so long. It's been 10 hours since I started this project. Not that I'm complaining or anything, I just wanted to shave down time where I could. Uh, so that's why there's uh, there's still some poop in our loop, but that's okay. I've already flushed both of these loops twice just to get as much crud out as possible, but I ran out of distilled water. Went through two gallons already today. Uh, so Wifey Sauce is actually going to the store to buy some more, but I'm not gonna film that part because it's kind of boring. But when she comes back, I'll be able to flush these loops a few more times and get most of the garbage out of the loop. That should clear up any of this cloudy business. I'll be sure to reclean these these reservoir tubes because that is nasty. All that aside though, the real point of this video was to see if we could get this system back up and running. And sure enough, it boots! Oh yeah, all the hardware's detected, looking good. It's noticed that I don't have anything plugged into my CPU fan header, but uh, I can fix that in the BIOS, and everything should be fine. So again, I'm not exactly sure what went wrong here, if it was as simple as a video card not being mounted, or what. If you guys have any theories of your own though, please feel free to share them uh, in the comments, not that we can really validate it now. It's a little bit late for that, but it'd still be interesting to read. Uh, so go ahead and blow that up, and that's pretty much all I got for now, guys. I think I'm gonna cut it off here. Again, it's been a 10 hour process, so I'm so ready to be done with this. I'm just glad that it's ended with the system back up and running. Guys, thank you so much for taking this ride along with me. If you enjoyed the video, toss a like on it. You know what to do. Subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. You can also check me out on Floatplane if you wanna watch my videos a week early without ads for three bucks a month. I'll put a link for that in the video description. Till next time, guys, thanks for tuning in. Have yourselves a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.